Hey everyone, it's Nick with Us vs. Herd. If it's your first time here, you like the content, hit subscribe if you want to get notifications for when we go live or post videos, tap the bell. And if you want to join the UVH fam, links are below in the description to our Discord, our free option trading group on Facebook, along with our Patreon. If you're here right now, say what up. Let's see how's it going. Getting things, getting things moving here. <laughs> stock market was a little, I would say, stock stock market was pretty lackluster today. I mean, it moved. I mean, we're down thirty four cents on spy today. Yo, Jeff, what's going on? Keith, how you doing? Keith, we got paid on that on that Uber on that Uber Iron Condor. Wish I bought more contracts. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like when you when you do when you're doing when you're doing an earnings plays, you want to kind of be conservative because you never know. You know, kind of like Shake Shake Shack was Shake Shack was estimating an eight dollar move, and um, you know Shake Shack had a um, they're down twenty percent, seventeen dollars. So you don't want to you don't want to run it into. If you're wrong about an earnings trade uh, when selling premium, you don't want to scale up too large, you know. Yeah, if you made money today, comment got paid. If you lost money today, comment learned a lesson. Keith, yo, tactical, what's going on? Dan, how you doing? Squids, how we doing? Jeff got paid. Um, I got paid today. <clears throat> I've been going really, I've been going really slow and low lately, um, because I mean, that's the market, that's the market we're in. Um, you know, I have, I haven't, I was actually also today I was, in, I was in a meeting from like noon till two o'clock, uh, central time. So I missed, I missed the afternoon of training and I didn't, I didn't put on any trades. You know, in terms of in terms of earnings plays, nothing really caught my eye for um, tomorrow, so I didn't I didn't trade anything. Um, but I mean, some of the some of the the trades I did today, I mean, uh, McDonald's came back around. I was actually down eighty dollars on McDonald's yesterday. Came back uh, for I think about a twenty five percent win, which will cover that here. Um, Uber, uh, my Uber trade. So Uber, we had on an iron condor, an iron condor for earnings, and I got 23 cents in credit, and I uh, paid 13 cents in debit. So I made I made I made about 40 45 percent on it. I had four contracts. Um, I still it's, it's it's still showing my position. Um, it's still showing my positions open uh, because I did put an order in for one cent because I can't I can't sell these calls. Um, so when I first when I first put the order in this morning, I try to I try to sell the iron condor. I try to close that whole order um, as a whole, but I wasn't able to close it because the calls the calls on Uber were worthless. Now I did have like my puts. I had the twenty six and a half and the twenty six puts. Um, but on Uber, what I was concerned about, um, Uber, what I was concerned about is, you know, it did it did hit yearly lows again today, twenty seven ninety seven. What I was really worried about was just a huge flush. It opened from like twenty nine down to like twenty seven or something, and then I was going to have to pay money to get out of the trade. So that's why, like, when you're right about earnings, like for me, for instance, when I'm right about earnings, I was right about this trade. You don't want to stick around when selling premium, especially like Uber is really, I think, a gamble. I mean, they were down down nine percent today, but I mean, they could have easily been down 20, 30 percent. Um, also, their this week their 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 stock lockout period is expiring, so people are going to be able to sell those. And if you guys remember beyond like last week, I mean, it didn't really have a good impact after earnings, and, um, and then the the lockout period, you know, the stock the stock crashed pretty hard. I mean. So I was a little bit worried about that. So that's why I wanted to close the trade out. I mean, I did I did good. I mean, I made forty five percent. So I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to milk the trade. I did have four contracts, but because I opened, I tried to close the whole thing in a hole. I wasn't able to close it because the calls are are, are worthless. Um, so 
it still shows I have this trade open and I, I probably have to let them expire because I did put an order in and it never got filled for these. So I was trying to sell it for a penny, but nobody nobody wanted this garbage. <laughs> oh, Tactical Joy, your second podcast, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, today um, the second podcast came out on Apple, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, and Google Play. Um, episode two, I interviewed uh, FC. Uh, his name is Ferris. He's one of our UVH fam members, and I've been watching him for a long time. And we talk about. I interviewed him um, because he talks about how he was a red trader and is now profitable trader on the year. Um, last year he was red. This year is green, and kind of like mentally that's that transition because I think for most traders from going from not profitable to profitable is mental. It, it doesn't have to do anything with your, I mean, obviously you need to have the right strategies and stuff, but the majority of the people in our community, they have what it takes to be profitable, but I feel like most of the time it's it's a mental game, why you lose money or why you put positions on, whether it's fear, whether it's greed, whether it's just putting too many trades on, um, but it's a, it's a mental thing. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people in our community, they have the skills to be profitable, but they have red day after red day after red day because they couldn't help themselves or they just took on too many positions or they didn't take profits when they should have took profits and you know so <clears throat> at least that's the way i see it after after a few years you know looking at what this community has developed into and that's where i see it. so i think this i think this podcast will help a lot of people um and I'll, you know i think i think it's a good reminder for everybody whether you're profitable or not. I mean, you can go from being a profitable trader to not being a profitable trader too. So, um, so yeah, Uber, Uber was a good trade, but yeah, these, these 34 and a half calls and 35 calls, I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna have to expire worthless. So I lost $16 on the put side, but made $56 on the call side, but watch a gap up huge. They get like an upgrade and they, I wanted to close it <laughs> and they, 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 uh, they, they gap up to like 35 and I get, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that's the risk of having this trade open, you know. J. Rob, what up, got got paid Qualcomm holding more till tomorrow, and got paid Disney and holding more for earnings. Yeah, so I kind of go through since since I'm trading a little bit slower, I've mostly been tra seen trading because this this environment hasn't been good for day trading just because we have a very low volatility environment and things have been very slow. So. Um, I've been mostly swing trading and it's been going fairly well. I'll go through a couple of these and kind of what my plan is for like ATVI beyond um, SPY and, and TEPA and all that. So I'll cover that in a second. Um, so I sold that Uber, <clears throat> sold the puts. Um, I'll go into TEPA. McDonald's, I took profits on. Now, this was a trade that I opened up yesterday. And it cost me about 225. I initially opened up a call position, but it looks like it was I was too early on it. So on McDonald's yesterday, I opened up a position on due to that CEO news and that whole thing. Um, yeah, guys, if you guys like the content, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. Um, but I bought too early. I bought at uh, 9:52, so I bought I bought right before the second leg down. You know. So I was actually worried that we were going to, I mean, we had some nice action at the end of the day. Yesterday it went from 187 back up to 188. Um, but I was worried that we were gonna get a gap down or something was gonna happen. So I added, I added in the, um, I added in the 185 call, uh, put. So normally, like when I'm swinging, I put in a some protection in there. When I when, when a day trade kind of goes against me, I like to it, it, I'll I'll try to make the trade work. Um, so uh, if it's something that I still believe in, if I don't believe in it, I'll just I'll just leave. Yo, Jim, what's going on? Um, but I still believe that McDonald's going to go up. But I did add protection. I generally don't like paying more than fifty cents for protection, but I I I, I uh, paid sixty five cents for it just because I this whole this whole trade I put on kind of wrong. Um, McDonald's uh, the call side. Uh, 
I accidentally hit the ask and then it escalated and then it increased it by like 15 cents instead of locking in more of like a mid price. I should have put a limit order instead I hit the ask just kind of going quick. So I left 15 cents there and then I, because it was going down, the puts got a little bit inflated and that's why I lost so much. So I, I think I left about $30, 30 cents on the table. So I did I did come away with, you know, $56 out of it. So it wasn't a bad deal. It did go from, it was negative $80 yesterday to, um, you know, it says here I'm up $128 in that position today. So we came back down 80 up to a, a up 128 and it closed out for 56. You know, my original target was 192. Uh, we did hit that, so I took that trade off, and then you know it, it generally went up. I wanted to take the trade off before my meeting today, so I definitely wanted to. You know, if you have something going on, and you have a trade on. You know, feel free to close it. If you're profitable, close it. Because this could have easily, I could have woke up, I could have got out of my meeting, and this could have been 190, and I could have been paying money. And obviously, this would have worked out, but end of day, it kind of, it was at like 192.50. It wouldn't really had made much more money anyways. So why leave the risk on if if uh, you're not able to monitor a trade as sensitive as this? Also, it expires this week, so I really didn't want to jeopardize going from red to green. You know, you want to you wanna keep that flow going. You don't want to go from red to green to red. I mean, you know, that's not what you want to do. Um, so I did put a couple other trades on. I bought Teva and a spy, de uh, spy debit spreads on Teva. I have, so Teva has earnings on Thursday. And I thought that I bought the dip on, on this bad boy. Um, but it looks like it sold off more yesterday. It went up pretty nice today. It sold off um, But I did buy in here when it was looking like it wanted to push back up and then it ultimately failed So I don't mind I don't mind adding, you know averaging down on this position. Uh, it cost me 25 cents I have a um, debit spread on it for 20 but for January I have January 2020 expiration as you can see here and I I bought the 10 call and sold the I sold the um, 11 11 call so my max loss is going to be on this is going to be $25 but my max profit is going to be $75 so you know very I think it's a very good uh, risk to reward on this bad boy here um, so I have I have 73 days for that to work out. You know, on Teva, what I liked about Teva here, um, on the one year, is we started to break out. Now we need to get above like nine. It got rejected at nine again today. Uh, got rejected here at nine on ten on October 21st. Got rejected at nine as well. But if we can get above this rejection area, we already broke above the first rejection area, which was like eight eight thirty eight thirty. 835 area and then now it seems to get rejected at nine so if earnings could push it above nine this could definitely be good for the 10 10 11 i think it will i think it'll go quick to the 12 area if things are good so i'm long that but nothing nothing too serious i'm trading very i'm trading very very small on that bad boy um maybe i'll average down but that that position is down five bucks so We'll see if we can go down more. I'll add an, I'll add more, but right now I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, spy, so spy. I have a debit spread for this week. It cost me 58 cents. I I bought the 307.50 call. And I sold the 309 call <clears throat> on spy. So it looks like this. And really, spy. After I put that position on. I mean, SPY went nowhere today. I mean, if you're looking at SPY, kind of sold off in today. But I mean, from 308, it keep like it hit 308 yesterday, pre-market, but it keeps dropping. It likes this 307 area right now, and they kept supporting it here, like 306.80 as well. So. You know, it held it held all afternoon until people took profits here, and it, it you know it just people exited. Um, but in terms of in terms of like a market top, I mean, I, I I'm I'm a little bit cautious here. Anything really for me above the 303 area, I'm going to be long. 
um, until we can break back down on this. Like right now, we could just be a slow grind up to 310, which that looks like is happening. As you can see now, since volatility, you know, if you look down here, volatility is getting crushed pretty big because um, we're not having any movement. So we're either going to, I think what's going to happen is, you know, we're having a slow grind up, especially as if the Fed pumps more money into the market. And there's more stock buybacks and all that kind of thing. I mean, we could have a slow grind up here uh, for the rest of 2019, and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like we're, the the interesting thing is now that earnings season's here, there's been zero trade news. Every day they say trade trade talks are progressing, but no one ever actually knows what that means. I mean, do you guys know what that means? I don't. Yo, Andrew, I'll get to BA in a second. <clears throat> Just going through my trades here. So I think I think what's going to happen, unless, I mean, obviously, anything can happen in the market. We can all be totally wrong. <laughs> like, last December was a bloody freaking December. But I'm thinking slow grind up. It's, 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 if, if you look back to these last this blast bull run here, you can see very slow grinds up. You know, back in March, back in, back in um, December here very just slow bleeding up and that's what this this is what this reminds me of right right here this chart right here going from 297 to 308 has been a very slow boring process trump's 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 trying to finish the rear year red i mean he trump is trying to finish the year green he's not he's not you know last time it cost him we, we were we ended the year down five percent on the s p's last year he's not looking to uh you know, it's not going to be looking good for us 2020 election if we have two back-to-back -back red years. We're we're up like what 15% this year on the year. So, if we go down 15% or more, it's not going to be looking good for a 2020 election. So right now, I think what he's trying to do, if we look at, if we look at some of these tweets here, we got Trump tweets right here. I mean, I think he's just, I think he's just trying to stay away from impeachment right now. Um, 90 he, he tweets all this up propaganda about people opposing his impeachment um you know so he spends all his time on twitter talking about how he's not guilty i mean he may be guilty he may not be guilty i mean who who knows i mean there's so many so many facts being thrown around right now that we we honestly it's hard to tell who's telling the truth but you know all this whistleblower he wants to meet the whistleblower you know all this stuff and you know it doesn't you know he could be right he could be wrong i mean who knows but from our concern as options traders is what is he going to do to impact the market and right now he's laying low on the on the china news no news is good news yeah so um you know that's kind of my opinion that's kind of my opinion on spy um so i have a couple other positions i'm going to update you on um atvi beyond and disney um we'll start with disney now disney i made some money on last week on the run-up disney's kind of performing lackluster this week it did drop huge i mean it had a, had a nice drop at open yesterday went from 134 i put the position on but it kind of kind of faded the rest of the day and then today at 133 dropped again holding um then returned to 132 before dropping back down to um the 131 area yo manny what's going on man um so we we made some money on this ramp up i did put i thought that was going to ramp up into into earnings but Right now, right now it's been a bit anemic, as you can see here. Looks like it wants to revisit 130. You know, I have the 137 call, which I was just trying to hold into earnings. I don't think I'm gonna hold through. I'm sorry, I have the 138 call now. I don't think I'm gonna hold on to it. Um, I'll give it a little bit more time if this can uh, increase in value before earnings, and then I might just cut it. I mean, I think I think they're gonna do well, but it's kind of a gamble. I might I might sell some premium on it for earnings. So I'll probably cut this position on Disney if it doesn't increase in value. Right now, I'm down like twenty seven bucks or twenty two dollars, um, down twenty two dollars on the overall position. Yesterday was up by five dollars, I guess. So, you know, we'll see what happens. If this can make a run to one thirty five again, um, would be good before earnings. But right now, it's hard. Right now, right now, it's hard to say. 
what it's going to do. Um, beyond, so beyond actually, uh, we got some money back today from it. That was negative a little bit. Um, that's a smaller position, I would say. Um, I have next week, so I actually have on the. Um, I have a debit spread. I have the 8750 call and the 90 call debit spread um, on Beyond. So Beyond actually had an upgrade today, which pushed it higher. But as you can see, that got sold off. Had a nice gap up. I mean, stayed positive today. It was up like 5% at one point, um, pushed up to 85 and then sold off. So I was thinking that it was going to maybe go to like 88 area where this was, but right now it's holding this. So maybe tomorrow we can push up to 88 and I can I can I can collect my profits. Other than that, I mean I'm down 35 bucks on it right now, so it's not not huge, but it's something that I am monitoring and I want to take I want to take that position off and put on some different positions. Um, and then ATVI, they also have earnings this week. I made some money on them last week. I put another position on them. This is another debit spread. I have the 58 call and I'm sold, selling the 60 call. Right now it's down $14, so not huge, but ATVI, this and, and the Beyond debit spread and the ATVI debit spreads all for next week expiration. Disney is for this week's expiration. Um, ATVI, it's like the same chart every single day in ATVI. I don't know if anyone's, it sells off, recovers, sells off, recovers, sells off, and all this is in the 15, first 15, 30 minutes of the day, sells off and then recovers. So I, I mean, based on this chart, you just buy the, the first dip at open, you're good. You know, <laughs> like sells off here. I mean, just ridiculous. The same chart every day, sells off, recovers. I mean, for la every day, last five days here, you, as you can see, the last five days here, the same exact chart, sells off, recovers, sells off, recovers. So. When you go to put a trade on, they're gonna switch. They're gonna switch the trend on you. Apple closed lower again today. Two red days, sell off at the close. Down two hundred on Apple puts. I'm willing to, to drop like the Tower of Terror. <laughs> yeah, I mean Apple. Apple. So the, I mean it's down thirty seven cents <laughs> on the day. It's like nothing compared to how far it's coming last week. The thing is, like, what I know about bull runs from my experience, and um, the bull runs that I've 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 traded and been in, is the dips. The dips are almost like it, they, the dips. They price the dips in a way that they make it not want bulls to get in. Like for uh, day traders, like for us, like, or they they push the dip enough for people to load up on puts and then they rip it back up. So right now, I mean, the bull trend is undeniable. I mean, you don't want to short this. I mean, this is, I mean, you, 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 you say there's weakness here, but we're still at, we, we touched another high today, touched 58.19 today, just today. This could rip up past 260. One upgrade, one anything is pushing this thing high. So... That's the thing. When we're at 52 week highs, like if you guys remember in 2017 when the S&Ps and the Dow and all that were making new highs, it was like every day new high. I mean, CNBC, Trump, everybody was tweeting and, and posting propaganda about um, about new high, new stock market high, new this, new that. And it was every like every day it seemed, you know. So you want to you want to be careful about shorting these highs. I mean, it makes sense kind of like what goes, what it went up that fast, but it could also come down as fast. But if you're looking at Apple's trend here, it's been going up almost every day since October 3rd, which is now November 5th. So for a month straight, all you had to do was buy calls. This is, I mean, this is an undenial after, after breaking, you know, right here, at 228, 230, it's an undeniable breakout. Now this is what you can consider a breakout. So we could be the smartest people in the world, but at the end of the day, the numbers are what the numbers are. I mean, I don't think, I'm not buying stock. I mean, and this, I think for traders, I think this is the biggest mental battle for us is I'm not buying, I'm not buying stock at, at Apple at 260. Why would anybody else? 
Well, you're not everybody else, right? You're just the you're just the trader behind the screen trading, you know, just day trading this stuff. Um, you know, who knows when you know when breakouts like this, you don't know how many funds are loading up to cash out on a run. You know what I mean? You know, and if you think about it, I mean, all the pensions buys, all that kind of stuff, also play into. I mean, Apple, Apple, Apple's a holding in 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 in. 401ks, pensions, all that stuff. I mean, you got to be, you have to understand that those are also quarterly buys for those people. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that Apple's not going to crash. I mean, it could very well come back down to 220. But right now we have an undeniable breakout. You know, I would like for it to revisit 240 area, but I mean that's just the way that's just the way that I see it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I've been trading these kind of. I mean, if you've been trading the last ten years, eight years, you you kind of get used to you kind of get used to seeing these charts of just up. <laughs> Whether it's right or wrong, I mean, people were shorting back in in 2015, 2016, saying that was the top, and here we are going into 2020, and we're still pushing new highs. So at 220, I help fund this channel. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, it's gonna take a little bit for us. I mean, we they need some trade. You need some for this to hit two twenty. You need some trade news, man. Like honestly, and they had good earnings and they have a, a positive release of the iPhone eleven. I mean, things are going well for Apple. Um, but Andrew, let's talk about Boeing. Boeing. So I made some money yesterday. I made the money. Uh, I've been making money when it's peeing back between three forty and three fifty. Here, it's been a good trade. But now we. Again, we now have a breakout, a lot of positive momentum for Boeing. 737 Max News is kind of kind of dying down, and they're trying to get the the planes back out. And the CEO said the day that he's not going to be taking any bonuses this year, which he still gets paid a gazillion dollars, anyways. But <laughs> um, yeah, we're not talking. But I mean, I, I'm definitely thinking we're going to 370 on this one. I was actually hoping today we were going to get a little, you know, kind of return down to 355, but that just didn't happen. It just kept going. I was hoping we can come to three. I wanted to put I wanted to put a position on at 3 355, but it never came back. I wanted kind of a retest where it opened at, but I mean, it sold off a little bit at at, at power hour, but it never it never came back down. They just spent two and a half billion for two and a half billion for housing projects. How's that? How is that strong? Two and a half billion dollars for Apple's nothing, man. I mean, how many hundred? They have what over a hundred billion, two hundred billion in, in in their war chest right now. Two and a half billion is 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 a little scrape on the knee. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it won't even bleed. It's like it's it's like if you if you. If you if you rub your if you if you rub your arm against something and it scratches it, it never doesn't bleed. <laughs> I took a trade on it. Andrew, Andrew, I think you I think you're gonna be okay. I probably should have put a trade on this, but uh, I have a hard time as well, like trading break. I have a hard time as well trading breakouts. You're you're supposed to just get back. You're just you're supposed to just get on board and not think about it, but we kind of overthink it, right? It was a scalp, nice. Yeah, two billion, Dan Lee, what's going on? If you're here right now and you're watching this, say what up. If you like the content, hit the like button, appreciate it. <clears throat> um, but going into, I didn't see any earnings that I was really feeling today. You know, going, going into my watch list here. Um, some Robin Hood, Robin Hood action. Got a couple spreads on in here. Nothing, nothing serious. Just uh, playing around with Robert a little bit. <clears throat> but um, on earnings, earnings, I wasn't really interested in CVS. Um, I wasn't really interested in any of these companies. I guess Weight Watchers, um, Match.com. Weight, uh, Weight Watchers. The what I didn't like about them is they had a. Um, a six dollar expected move for like a thirty dollar stock, so it was expected to move twenty percent, and looks like it looks like it did. Also, Weight Weight Watchers in general, I mean the volume the volume's not the best. 
they have some volume in here, but it, it it really didn't it really didn't appeal to me in terms of uh, what that where they were doing. Uh, CVS I was a little bit interested in, but uh, Walgreens also had news. Uh, yeah, J Rob about the um, right Aid and oh, CVS. So good thing I didn't put a position on there. I wasn't able to really trade that well because I was stuck in the meeting. But yeah, CVS came back down. It looks like they have earnings tomorrow. Um, um, but Walgreens, I mean, ripped up and came back down. That's kind of that's kind of interesting for it to go private like that. Um, I am gonna be I am gonna be interested in tomorrow. I'm gonna be interested in Roku, Square, uh, Baidu, obviously Qualcomm. Um, not really Fitbit after the after the buyout news, and then maybe maybe Win is kind of kind of what I'm looking at here. So I'm looking at this. I don't know if I'm gonna sell premium in Roku though because uh, I feel like they're gonna they're gonna come hard. I mean Roku, Roku. I think right now at this point in time, like Roku, like for me, Roku is really a gamble. Like if you, you know, it, it hit 151 today uh, this week and it hit a low this week of 136. Super wide range. I mean, right now the expected move is 20 dollars on a 130 dollar stock. Premium is. I mean, I would sell premium here because it's super rich. I mean, unless I mean, what is the price now? Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can put something together. I just get I just get worried because they they literally can say anything in this. Like if I go one standard deviation out, I mean, I think a little bit too much risk and very low reward here. I mean, maybe maybe the rewards okay. I mean, one ninety two. Eh. I like to like when I, when I do an iron condor for earnings. I like to try to get at least 70, 75 cents um, minimal. If we go within this, can get a little bit more. Go right into one standard deviation. But if it moves, if it moves twenty dollars, the expected move right now is twenty dollars. The downside is one thirty nine. I'm gonna be right riding the line there at one eighteen. Or if it goes up, you know, I'll be at like. 149 so we have we have more room to the upside so maybe bring the upside down a little bit and then extend out the the bottom you know could do something like that but i don't know i i probably not going to trade roku earnings just because of i think that i think that it's a bit of a gamble um square j rob so square <clears throat> Right now, the expected move is five dollars and forty cents. Um, I like Square. I was actually looking to buy some at sixty today. Um, I just didn't because I had the meeting. I didn't want to watch it, so um, I was actually going to day trade Square today, and I just didn't. Um, but right now, I mean, the premium premium is looking okay, um, five dollars. But I think on the one year chart, I think 60, 60 is kind of a bounce territory. If it gets below 60 for earnings, and we're kind of riding the line now. You know, last time it went from 80, 80 bucks down to 70, and this is what caused the, the downtrend is this last earnings, you know? Went from 50, 60 up to 80, and then this last this last earnings, they completely destroyed the stock this last quarter. So this quarter is very important that they do well. I think they're going to do okay. I think they're going to do okay. And then they, they also added in fractional stock trading as well. Um, we'll see what their numbers come in at. But, I mean, I like Square as an overall company. I own Square stock, which I sold in 2018. Um, I don't, I'm no longer a shareholder, but it um, it's, it's always done me well. I mean, Square's done me very well. Um so in terms of in terms of a trade on Square, I mean, if we're looking to sell some premium, I'm not looking to buy any premium on this. Um, like for for earnings, I don't, I'm not looking to buy any premium. Um, let's see if we can do like if we want to sell the 56. I mean, I would probably just take a small position. They do have 50 cent wide strikes, so that's helpful. So you can you can do something like this and like get 20 cents and kind of scale this up as much as you want. So you want to take in 100 credit, risk 150. That risk reward to me is a lot, a lot better. 
you know, that's why I did take that Uber trade. So that Uber trade that I did, I took 23 cents in credit and I bought four contracts. That was more appealing to me than than that uh, Roku, where it was like 58 cents credit. Yo, Albin, what's going on? I, hope I said your name right. I try I try my best to to to. YouTube needs to have like a a button you can click to hear people's names like they do on Facebook. Like, how do you pronounce your name? Because there's a lot of people with different names here that I'm not accustomed to, and I I don't want to botch. I don't per, I don't purposely try to botch people's names, but um, it happens from time to time. Um, J Rob, I'm using Thinkorswim. You did it, you did it first time someone gets it right. All right, all right. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Hit that like button. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Square. I actually wasn't expecting a Square to sell off from like 63 down to 60 today. I mean, puts were definitely rewarded in that, but that was insane. Oh, oh, what time frame? On, the, I only trade the 15 minute chart. I've tried. I played around with different time frames, and the 15 minute chart is what is the best chart for me. I find I've traded the five minute chart. I've traded the 30 minute chart. I've traded the one minute chart. I've traded the one hour chart. I've tr so I, I now trade I exclusively, which I have been doing for a few years now, 15 minute chart. And that's it. It the, what I what I like about the 15 minute chart is it kind of slows things down where it gives you enough time to make a decision, but not too long where you're really dragging out for the next candle to close. So you're able to day trade it. But also, like with a five minute chart, I find that I make decisions a little too quick. So, like for my personality and the way that I trade, I had to find out kind of, you, like as a trader, you have to find out what works for you, what time frame works for you. Are you more of a scalp trader? Are you more of a swing trader? Are you a day trader? You know, what works for you? And like, and, and a lot of it has to do with your schedule too. Like if you work a job, you know, day trading is not gonna be good for you, right? So unless you don't care about your job and you get paid just to sit there, <laughs> but but um, you know finding what time increments. I mean that's part of the formula. Like like I tell people, it's you know what do you have to do to make the lemonade? You know what ingredients do you do do you need to make a profit in the stock market? In the time increments is one of them. You know how much capital to deploy is another one. And you really want to take that though all those ingredients to make a profitable trader. Like if you're making lemonade, you know too much sugar it's going to be too sweet. Not enough uh, too much water it's going to be too diluted. You know not enough lemons. I mean so it's 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 really coming up with a recipe uh, that works for you as a as a trader. Um, Alvin Alvin uh, T Mobile Sprint merger. So um, I have uh, I haven't really looked into I haven't actually looked into it too much, um, mainly because they've been talking about the T-Mobile Sprint merger for what two years now. Um, also, I don't know is it merging so T-Mobile becomes Sprint or so that Sprint becomes T-Mobile? I didn't understand that whole thing either. Um, both both stocks I didn't really ever trade, um, so I I just sorry my my voice is getting a little scratchy. Um, I wasn't really sure for T-Mobile Sprint. I mean, you know, Sprint's a very cheap stock, um, so I wasn't I, I'm not really familiar with their stocks. I don't really trade them that much. Um, I will say though, AT and T. Um, AT&T is interesting after this breakout here at 34 has been going pretty nice. Oh, they just approved it today. Nice. Um same with Fitbit. I don't I don't gener I generally don't like trading like mergers and stuff. Buyouts and mergers, I mean it's just a whole lot of headache and heartache to it's a gamble. Um but Fitbit, I mean, they have earnings, but they're not going anywhere because Google's already committed to buying them, so they just have to get that approved. But Fitbit, Fitbit's not one I'm going to be trading. I don't even know. I mean, how much is there? Yeah, I mean, this is how you know it's a bad. This is how you know like it's a bad trade. So earnings is coming up for Fitbit tomorrow, 
and the seven put and these these are like basically worthless I mean the stock's not gonna go anywhere um, Tesla's interesting um, <clears throat> it's been having a hard time around last couple days around like a 322 area I'm trying to see if it wants to go to like 325 323 um, really really struggling around around the 32250 area as you can see like yesterday today and then on October 29th just it's, it's stuck right now so I mean I do think that I mean it, it is trending kind of up here but and it's not going down so that's good but the question is how long is it going to consolidate in this area um, so when when a, when a stock is consolidating you have to be careful because you don't want to put a position and then they bleed you out on theta uh, for your expiration so when the stock is consolidating you just got to you got to be careful to pick the right expiration you know it's a good time to put a trade on because IV is really low so I mean I, I was actually looking today um, but this this uh, I'm, I'm gonna I want to see if it comes back down to the 315 area um, yesterday 309 got bought up hard so that was that was really interesting so if it can come back down here 310 305 uh, 315 area I think I would I, 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 maybe I'm gonna put on like a, a debit spread maybe like three weeks out because it could consolidate after a massive move you you have to you have to be aware that a stock is going to consolidate sooner than later so after a massive move we are now now into consolidation which is healthy for the stock so it's good for the stock you know the stock can't just go up every day it can't go down every day so consolid consolidation is overall healthy for the stock au roku would you do the 11 8 or 1115 um i think that if i were just going to sell premium because roku's crazy i would do the next week 11 15. um i don't know if i'm going to do a trade on it but if I were to do it, I think I would do the following week and try to get that premium crush. Um, and that way, if I am like, like if I am wrong on Roku, it gives it time another week for it to come in line. If I'm selling premium on it, you know. Um, J Rob, I don't really have a preference between debit or credit. Um, I just, I just like to use a strategy for what the stock calls for. So. You know the 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 strategies and options they're kind of like Lego blocks. You can make them to create anything, but you have to use the right strategy for what that stock demands. So if you use if you you may have the right idea about that stock, but the wrong strategy, and then you lose money. So you know part of being a a, a good trader, profitable trader, or whatever you want to call it, is identifying what strategy to use. For when that stock is is in that place, you know. Hope that makes sense. But basically, you have to apply the correct option strategy to what you think the stock is going to do or what you want to do. Like, like for earnings, like for my Uber, like my Uber trade today, my my strategy was to um, crush premium selling an iron condor. It wasn't to it wasn't to have the options increase it was hoping that uber was going to stay within the expected range and i was going to take advantage of the rich premium um which that worked out sergio what's going on i'm, I'm doing well doing well how are you doing so you have to you know like earnings i like to sell premium you know i did like when when implied volatility iv is cheap i do I, I like to do debit spreads like on boeing i did a debit spread on spy i do i did a debit spread because iv uh, options are cheap right now so since options are cheap, I'll do I'll do some debit spread to lower risk. The last week has been very really good trading safe and taking profits ten to fifty percent. Nice. Yeah, I mean J Rob, it sounds like you're sounds like you're finding your zone. You really just need to find what works for you. Yo, Sergio, thanks for the two dollars, man. Appreciate you. Really. Thank you. You know, um, like I was like I was saying earlier. I, I believe everyone can be a profitable trader, but you need to unlock that potential yourself. Like, I mean, I'm not here. I mean, I have red days, I have green days, I have really green days, and I have had really red days. I mean, people that have been watching this stream for a long time know that. 
You know, I, I've had days where I'm flat. I've had days that were way up. I've had days that were way down. But you have to you have to go what works for you. I, I think it's good to take ideas from other traders and apply that to your own trading. But like, you can't go. You know, I, I think this is where a lot of like the gurus get it wrong. Is you can't go and apply Nick's strategy to your trading because you have your 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 different person one. You're, you you have a different risk profile emotionally you're way different so you have and you have a lot your, your time constraints are different so all those things add up so that's why it doesn't work you I want to provide one of the goals that I have with this channel is to provide you with the tools and the knowledge so that way you can develop your own plan to becoming a profitable trader because nobody can do that but you so I'll get off the soapbox now <laughs> um, But I think I think that's one of the I think that's one of the everyone's looking for guidance and I think that that's good, but you have to figure out how does this apply to my trading style and strategy and how does this work for me, you know. Surprised you didn't go all in on ten dollar GE puts. <laughs> well, good thing I I mean good thing I didn't I mean GE is nuts. GE. GE's gone from nine dollars to like eleven dollars in the last five days. I mean, I'm glad that the stock is turning around, but it still ha it still has a long way to go. I mean, I feel bad. I feel bad for. I mean, even GE got delisted from the exchange uh, from the indices. I mean. Five years has not paid out well. Like people, like you gotta, you got, you you gotta, you gotta think about this in terms of GE. It'd be like buying Apple and then Apple decreasing for the next five years in your four hundred one k. I mean, do you know what that means for people? Ariano, how you doing? You know, it's 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 terrible. Like there's a lot of people who who buy safe stocks like GE. And they're buy and hold. They have them all in their retirement accounts. They have them all in their, you know, and 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 five years goes by and it's down, you know, it's down seventy five percent. You know, doesn't doesn't make you feel good. <laughs> so I feel I feel bad for those people. But in terms of trading, I mean, to have a full turnaround, we really need to break fifteen. I mean, it's been here before, but last February it came up to 12, almost 12, like 11.75, but it's not looking good. Ariana, yeah, um, none of this is consulting advice, consult financial advisors. I mean, I, I don't really believe in financial advisors either because financial advisors, they just care about their commissions and their own money. Like, I think the best financial advisor is yourself. Like all the information these are called public companies so all the information is public do your research do your own due diligence and you'll make money whether you're long-term investing or just trading yeah this is i mean i haven't been trading nvidia i know they have earnings coming up but can't i mean nvidia has been crazy once the once the china once the um once the china news died down Nvidia has just launched. That's what I'm. Um, uh, I, I know Dan says I know a bunch of GE employees. It's a big fat. It's a fat big. It not going anywhere. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Gerald, what's that's what I'm going to go back to school for as an old man. <laughs> you're gonna be getting. You're one of the one, one of the bald dudes in the back that's at the community college. <laughs> I'm just here because I have a lot of free time. Andrew, Andrew, I only trade the 15 minute chart. Yeah, you could do that. You could. That was a manipulation. Yeah, I mean, Nvidia. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm. A, I don't know if I'm gonna trade them for earnings either. Might wait for after the earnings. I've been. I've been very. What's been working for me for earnings trade? I've been putting iron condors on, and I've been very selective of the ones that I have been doing, and I, it's been paying off. All right, guys, we're coming up in an hour. Any other stocks you want to look at, 
Um, Sergio, again, thank you for the two dollars, man. Appreciate that. Um, if you guys like the content, hit the like button. I really appreciate that as well. I was looking at that. Oh wait, good thing I did. Yeah, I mean, Nvidia was kind of flat, but they have uh, in, Nvidia has earnings on. Um, so next next Thursday. Next Thursday, what I would like, I would like some pullback down to like the two hundred area, so then I could put a, so I could put a spread on. That's what I would like for Nvidia, but. Yo, appreciate it. Glad you did. Glad you dug the content on the, the podcast, Dan. I've been, I've been. I mean, the, the podcasts are interesting because they allow me to make content that's 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 um, way different than anything that I could put out on any other platform. If that makes sense, allows me to talk to people. Um, I mean, I know I know FC and I trust them. Um, one of the things that I've kind of debated was doing like live calling into live streams, but I also uh, was hesitant on that because someone could come on YouTube and start saying some some crazy things and and racist stuff or whatever. So the the nice thing and what I found is the podcast I'm able to make sure that content is good um, before I put that out. So, anyways, guys. You guys all have a good day. Stay safe. Stay green. It's us versus her.